Hi there, I'm Father Bill Holtzinger, the pastor of St. Anne Catholic Church in Grants Pass, Oregon. And uh, last time I posted a video on our Facebook page, we were just bringing the metal in. The trucks were coming in to uh, have the metal unloaded and things put in place. And now we are many months since then and let's take a look at what's here. It's pretty amazing. Let's check it out. Okay, so now I'm standing in front of the church as it is now, as you can see, mostly erected here. We have uh, scaffolding on the siding where there's black, what's called hydrotex, and the uh, chicken wire on top of that where they're going to be putting stucco. Underneath that was what's called dense glass. You can still see it up here. That meant at the time that was up, it was all yellow. This church you could see, I think, from a satellite all the way up. So I walk around, you can see they're getting ready to put some uh, of these stones. Interesting, this pile here. Those will get cemented onto these walls, or these, these pillars here. Kind of like this. There you go. That's what they look like when they're all put on the siding. We have our two smaller doors, one here, and one way over here, right there. You can see the stonework. And above us is an amazing tongue and groove work that was done and then was stained. It's pretty amazing. You still have to do another coat. But before me here is actually the main entrance. Back up a bit so you can kind of see it. So you see the main entrance there, and those are not doors, those are just uh, accoutrements and the glass above on the, the round things will be uh, images of the Jerusalem cross. So I walk in here, you'll probably hear a little bit more echo. We just finished putting in the, uh, the ceiling and it's been textured, soon it will be painted. Over to my left, this is a mechanical room over here. It's not very exciting, but I'll go in here, you can see it. There's not much to be seen. There you go, storage and mechanical. This will be a water fountain right here. I think there's gonna be a tall one and a small one there. The janitor room where there's the ability to then rinse out a mop if needed. Followed by a little hallway where there will be a family bathroom. Again, it's really dark in here. And there'll be a changing table. The idea here is though, if you are a parent, you'll be able to then use this very easily from a room right here called the bride's room. And here we've actually textured and painted there's now starting to put electrical fittings. This would be where a television, probably a 65 inch television would go. We could have meetings in here in this room. And um, of course when there's brides and there's a wedding, they'll be able to see what's going on because the, um, there'll be a video camera right behind the baptismal font. Now moving into what's called the cry room. There's a big window here where people and parents and kids will be able to see right out and what's going on. That's the, in the background, the front of the church, or the back of the church, depending on how you want to call it, basically the sanctuary. So again, if you're in here and you have a, a crying child and you want to have a, their diaper change or something, you can go right through here and back into the family bathroom. And so that way you wouldn't even have to go back into the main uh, body of the church. You can then just go right back through here. This is then, all these doors, you notice they're radius doors, the rounded doors which was a wonderful thing, a donation by our local um, door company called Rogue Valley Door. It's amazing, their, their gift there. John Duncan is the guy that owns the company and he was very generous. This is one of the entrances here. And again, back into the narthex. That door over there is the bathroom for men and women. In our previous church, we had a bathroom for men which had one toilet, barely. And the women's room at least had an area where they could uh, and wash their hands and do other things and look at a mirror, whatever they might need to do. And, but there's still only one toilet. Now we have four toilets in each and sinks. What you're seeing here now is a big uh, window where there'll be a cross put on here as you look up. And then even looking further up, looks like they've got this all painted up and you can see, well, it may not come out very well, but at the top of this tower, it's a eggshell white and it's interesting the uh, color that they painted up here in our main color is what's called the Chapman plus 25%. One of the uh, prisoners, he is a, uh, a retired contractor. He has uh, been doing a lot of work in other areas of contracting and he has a color that is very favorite, or that is a favorite from uh, a lot of his customers. So he, we went with that along with the 25% uh, more, I guess, uh, color in it. And so called, they call it Chap or Chapman 25. So many people wanted that color in their homes. The uh, paint company just called it Chapman. And we have it with 25% more tint or 
or uh, color in it. This is our baptism font. I don't know if you can tell, but you have stairs in there. But even backing up here, a little further, you can see it's in the shape of a cross. Now the idea here is up above, there is a hole. See that hole way up there? I'll kind of zoom in right up there. There's going to be a video camera there that will pan, tilt, and zoom. And over, if they pan it down upon here, they will be able to see an overview of this baptismal font, which will be in the shape of a cross, but not any cross. The tile work that'll go in here will be in the shape of a Jerusalem cross. So that means a big cross in the center, which is formed within the tile of the actual baptism font here, a little cross here, and up the side and down. And then here, notice these two sides. These are actually where we're gonna dip our hands in to sign ourselves, but again, the tile work will go over and then come out on the bottom, on the floor here in the corners, the four corners, there will be small crosses again, uh, one over there and again one over there for a total of four. That is a Jerusalem cross. If I back out, you might see again what it might look like. So this is the, this is what's called cement board or backer board, uh, or hard, hard backer, wet backer board. This is uh, now really getting a real good visual of this baptismal font. Many people are going to join the church. And here's the theology here. When they come into the church, they are to be baptized into the church. So they'll come around to this backside where we'll have temporary steps. They will step into the baptismal font and towards Christ in the Eucharist, where the altar will be in the back there. Or the front. I'll call it the front. <laughs> Over here on the right-hand side is our uh, confessionals. We have two confessionals for the two priests. If you come in here, you can imagine there'll be a kneeler here and a screen. And it's really hard to see, but looks like they just... Uh, Painted this room as well. Over here will be where the priest will sit and maybe another person if they want to have face-to-face -face confession, they can sit. Both of these rooms are mirrored. They're the same. As we walk in, we have a, a plate on the floor where there's going to be a sound sound and audio-visual will be coming out of here. And then we'll have a roll-top desk that will be in the back of the pews so that we can control the sound with the speakers that will be eventually hung on the ceiling. And then way over to the right, where you can't see that we have subwoofer to fill out all of the rest of the low end of the sound. But some of the amazing things here is we have these beautiful windows. The history here is that these windows were part of the original architecture and it kind of made the, the, the idea present of a sense of what is called Romanesque architecture. And from then, I thought, well, that's a pretty cool thing. I love those windows. Let's then see if we can do our, our doors around there. You can see there's a door there. Two doors there, and over here we have doors that are around, so a whole bunch of them have these radius windows. So you also notice that we have niches over here. There's two there, and two over here. Those are gonna be the statues of St. Therese, Therese of the Sioux, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, one of St. Anne, and one of St. Anthony. So we're not sure what order they will be in. In the front here, you can see we have two niches on either side. This side is the Mary side. We have a brand new statue of Mary coming in. And then over on this side, it'll match the St. Joseph that we had received many years ago by a donation of uh, the Bush family, which was a wonderful thing. There's another set of doors over there. This door goes outside to um, where our mechanical and HVAC will go. There's a, a cement pad out there. In here is the area where the choir will store their there are uh, musical instruments and other things. And further back in there, we have the AV room where all the technology and uh, routers and switches and other things will be. On the floor here, you'll see there's a, another hole here where the sound system will then be connected with like a keyboard through the cables. There's even a panel here for a backup on that regard. And it's all plumbed underneath the, the uh, cement here to that box way over there that I was talking about earlier. As we move over to this side, this is now the north side of the church, you'll see there's this big space. Well, what is this? This inside here is our daily mass chapel. And this opening will be a set of folding doors. There'll be a window here, and you'll be able to see in the church, but on moments when there's a lot of folks, we'll then just open them up and use this chapel actually for just seating. So like the dedication on September 1, there'll be seating there. On the other side, there is then another window, but this will not be movable, but you'll be able to see in and out of it. And people will be able to go in through this door here. Each week we get two of these doors from the door company. And it's kind of neat when they get installed. But I want you to take a look at this. This is the, the um, sanctuary area. 
I love this image here. Uh, that's not our altar. That's just a table with our plans. You can kind of see the plans are laid out here. And they're looking at how the, the floor and the earth, you can see this is where the ceiling, you can see how the, the vaultedness is here. These are ribs. Those ribs are right up there. Those are the ribs that are drawn in there. But I mean, this is just gorgeous. The work they've done and the color is beautiful. And while this is no exit now, that will be one of the exits out of the chapel here, the Daily Mass Chapel. The main one will be here. So notice again, it is a rounded, actually it can be two doors to make that width there. All the windows you see, we're hoping eventually will be something uh, stained glass. These are slated for the four gospels, where the four animals that we see in the book of Revelation, uh, those two other windows have not been determined what they'll be. Way over here, these three big windows are slated to be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we haven't actually designed them, but that's the concept there. If I go behind, keep going over here, and then turn around and look up, because of the chapel, the similar windows on the other side are cut because of the actual building space here. And the idea here will be that will be an angel, a star, and another angel here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go towards the sanctuary now. I have to dodge all this hardware inside here. There's another door to exit. And, hmm, what are these? What could those be? Be interesting to find out. I wonder if there's a pair of something like it. Let's see. Is there something like it on the other side? Sure enough, there is. For our St. Anne uh, members, our parishioners, they might recognize what these are. These are the pillars from the old altar of our church. And they are made out of marble. And so we're using those as a kind of a, a uh, image for... Uh, suspending the niches where we'll have our statues. It's a great use uh, of these. So one angel is facing the altar right here, and one angel is facing the congregation coming up. Uh, this big black box here is not a box, it's actually a hole for you know, air intake, so for the HVAC unit. And on the ceilings, these holes, these black rectangular things, are where the heat and air conditioning will come out. They still need to tape up the ceiling, and from there, then um, put the um, texture on it. So I'm going up the stairs here of the sanctuary now. And as I look on the ground here, from the back of the sanctuary, here we go. This is the view. Okay, minus, of course, the scissor lifts. This is something that it'll look like. Down here we have another, these boxes or these holes or where there's been uh, put in the concrete conduit for sound and things like that. So this is where the amble will be. The altar will be just behind this one. And this could be mostly electrical in case we want to do something. We're not sure what it could possibly be, but otherwise it'll be covered. And over here will be where the um, presider's chair will be. And the idea would be at some time if we ever wanted to swap the presider's chair and the amble, we could do that very simply because these are all lined up. Behind me is can where the tabernacle will be and above will be there, the crucifix. There'll be a smaller crucifix in the daily mass chapel. This area has this kind of fun part behind it where I believe they're gonna be putting some lights back here so that'll go all the way around, all the way around and back down. And we'll do that same thing with the cross itself. The crucifix is being reconditioned um, for this use that was donated by a family many years ago and that's what we're going to be using with a new corpus or a different corpus that'll fit it better than what we did before in here this is going to be tough this is the entrance to the sacristy here and then there's another entrance on the other side over here this machine here is being used so they can polish the floors so i don't know what condition all of this is in i don't know if we can even get in there but before we do that i'm going to come back down here you see we get another one of those intakes we have another door here where does this go it's right next to the statue of what would be mary well in here is actually a ramp for any kind of access for handicap uh, wheelchairs and such this right here is intended to be for uh, lights and air conditioning so on occasions when we don't have uh, or we have a mass that is out of the ordinary uh, one of our sacristans can come here maybe a funeral and just come and turn on, on the lights and be able to see from here i'll go and kind of where they'd be so they'd be standing here Turn on the lights and then look immediately out and see the lights coming on and affirm that they've got them what they need very simply. Would it be lights in the sanctuary area? On the pre-do here, or the, uh, uh, the, the stand here. 
or out in the nave itself. And it's beautiful. This will be all carpeted here. The floor will be carpeted and this will be tiled. And it will begin tile in, around the baptismal font as well as in the entrance. The, the deal with the carpet especially is to reduce echo. One of our issues uh, we had from our previous church was it was such an echo chamber. And right now it's seriously an echo chamber. I don't know if this will come out, but if I uh, make a holler, it will echo for quite some time. Let's see. I'll try it. Woo! So at least four seconds or more of echo. And we gotta get that down as much as we can. Um, you might see in the very back here, it's called checkered up here. Well, the goal here of these back walls is to put soundproofing boards. So these will be, we'll just do something to basically dampen the sound. These areas up here, you see there's two there and a bunch here. And even the kind of looks neat. You one up there and over here, you see them again, I'll zoom in. Yeah, so these are going to be dampening, uh, cushioning the sound, uh, cushioning the sound, killing it. So it's going to hit this glass here and bounce, and it's of course going to bounce off this tile that's here. And that's going to be tough, but if it hits these parts of the, the building, it would stop. And that will reduce the echo and make what's being spoken more intelligible. Oh, one other thing I noticed, uh, I forgot to say this, that we have these two niches here, but on the back here we have something that's not a niche. It's just a blank area in our Lady of Guadalupe. We have an image that will go here. And we're not sure yet what will go over here. So it's going to be blank for the meantime. Um, who knows? Maybe a, a, how about a, an icon of the Divine Mercy or St. William. I'm kind of biased, but I thought that might be kind of fun. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see. I'm going to try to go into the sacristy. This might be a little bit too dark. So pardon me. I won't go through this door here, this entrance. Oh, by the way, here's another exit. Um... I'm going to go through a shortcut way, which is right up this ramp here. And there'll be a, a rail here for people to grab onto so they don't walk up and fall down. And let's see what's in here. Let's see if I can even see anything. Oh, it's really dark in here. Well, it's hard to see, but right here is this is a storage room. We have a ladder right now that goes up to the mezzanine. There's actually a second floor here. And they'll have to use this hole here to get our stained glass that's in the front of our church or the, the street side facing of the church up that area there. You can see it here, kind of hard, but that is actually our um, water, um, our pressurized water for any kind of fire issues. So we have all over the church, we have these, I don't know if you can see them there, these red things on the roof there, or the ceiling. Yeah, so if a fire occurs, those sprinklers will go off and it has to be pressurized. So there's actually a pressurized uh, tank of water underneath the front of the street and then it'll go through that valve and this pipe here in this room here right there so again it's really hard here let's see oh no there's a light here let's see if i can turn this light on one moment maybe we'll get some we'll get some ability to see what's happening here where is it there, is it right there? let's see here here we go hold on there we go this this is our sacristy. Let me back up here. So we have a non-round doors. Now we'll see this. This will be either an open space or even doors. It doesn't even need to have doors, but an open space. You could walk in and to the right here will be a closet. I'm going to back up here so you can see this maybe a little better. So that's a closet right there. There'll be a desk in this area. And you see that hole that's actually plumbed for electrical. And I think you need to see the electrical. That's the electrical right there. But that other hole is for internet. So everything here is going to be wired for uh, that. Can, of course, we need electrical. We actually have a computer that has a calendaring. It's called Ministry Schedule Pro. We use that for our ministers so we know who will be uh, coming for our Eucharistic ministry as extraordinary ministers and lectors. It looks like, as I see here, they've now put some uh, finished work here where they're going to, this is where the suspended ceiling is going to be. And uh, you can see that this is duct work. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna uh, fur in or put sheetrock up here, but just a suspended ceiling. This is a closet that'll get locked. Got another table or a desk area where we could put a computer, but also our phone system is an IP phone system. So we could put a phone there and um, yeah. Oh, over here, I like it over here. Similarly, here's another area, so walk-in closet. And back up. Is that this? So now this is, 
an area we're gonna have a set of drawers, a cabinet there with long drawers for stoles and things. Again, you see the right up here, that's a, uh, again, another area where internet will come in and we could use our computer there um, uh, or our phone system. So over here, this is an interesting thing. Every sacristy should have this. We have a regular sink here. That's what's plumbed there. But there's another one over here. What's that about? Well, it's called a saquarium. And basically when we uh, rinse out the vessels, the bowls and the chalices after they've been initially cleaned by the priest or deacon, they'd come back here and the sacristan would then wash them. But the remnants in any water, because it could have crumbs, and may have some of the, just the parts of the precious blood in there. Uh, and it, we don't want to put it down the, the sink in the sewer, so we put it down this, and this is actually plumbed to go out into the front of the church into some grassy area, some dirt. So what's going on there? I've already actually already blessed the ground uh, before we built the church, so that's already been taken care of. So I walk over here, oh, there's a hose in here. Oh, they've been working on here. Can't see it, but it's a dark room. This is our flower room here. Um, so I'll kind of turn around. As I go around, notice we saw that earlier. There's a, a closet here. The interesting thing about this closet, this is actually going to be where we will put some banners. We'll hang them. It's a very tall, and I can't see it. It's, there's a, there'll be like a, some large dowels up there so we can hang our banners somewhere. The entrance and exit of the sacristy is this door here. I mean, from the outside. If you're a sacristan, you will then have a combination. You'll punch code to get in through this front door here, and then, uh, you can uh, then come in and do your work and open up the rest of the church. Okay, I'm just blinded by that light as I looked at it. But again, that's what's going on there. To behind me as I leave the sacristy, I mentioned this room here. Remember the, the actual area up there? So there's a second floor, but this is the bathroom here. And this is the ramp. If I follow that around, it'll go back, back down to the other entrance that we saw on the far left uh, when we were in the nave. So above here is a floor with all kinds of stuff in it. And one of those things are the access to three windows, a round window and two uh, windows that kind of look like these doors where we have them now being built for stained glass and they'll be backlit. So that's gonna be cool. The image of the two, as I turn off this light here, are the birth of Christ and death of Christ. There we go, they come up. And the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist. And we put them together in two windows, which is amazing. Uh, I had to draw some stick figures to see if we could somehow put it together. And uh, we sent it to Willett Hauser, who's doing the construction of the windows, the stained glass. And the drawings are amazing, just beautiful. So that's looking again now towards the entrance of the church. These windows actually used to have veins in them, window veins, you know. And then we realized, uh, you know, well, actually we thought we were going to have stained glass windows in another generation from now, because they're set, they're, they're big enough window seals that they, we could put stained glass window in here from the inside. But we had some amazing generous donors who decided that they wanted to do that now and not later. And so those three windows that I just showed you, given these, these three windows here, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are slated for uh, sometime in... Uh, spring of 2019 to have those windows put in. Uh, these are nothing at this point, just their, their ideas. And if I can, I'll try to go around to the front, the outside of the church, so you can see the other two windows, actually the three windows, uh, that are scheduled and right now being built for an installation on August 20. So let's walk back out. By the way, this is the first time I've seen this. Uh, every day I come in here and check it out. This is a very dramatic change, This having this backer board on here. Because what they're going to do is stick glue, I should say. They're going to glue um, a pile into here. And they, uh, you can see they actually had mistakenly put uh, some of the backer board on the inside here, and there's glue marks. We had to get that off and then test to see if we can put something on the inside that will adhere uh, to the tile. So just imagine you're walking out of the church, you dip your hand in here. Sign yourself, your Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. <laughs> and then you walk out. Get the little boys or girls room, you can go through there. Oh, here's one thing. Uh, when we took the church down, we actually had a um, set of bathrooms for our school, which is through that door on the other side of this building is our school. We took out these bathrooms for them. So here's what we designed. 
it was a brilliant part of our, our committee that helped design the church, is instead of just putting uh, a men's bathroom there and then a women's bathroom on the other side, let's put them together. So we have men's now on this side and the women's on this side. Go through this hall, but there's another door. See the door that goes outside. So during school days, they'll be able to go through that door and this door will be locked. So they won't be able to roam around in the church. They'll just need to go to the restroom and take care of that stuff there. And then during the summer, during the school, or excuse me, some, the Sundays, of course that door would be open and that one could be as well, or maybe just as a, an exit. So basically when we leave church, this is what it'll look like. Well, we'll try to go through these big doors. And I don't know, this, let's see, I'm about five, almost 5'10". Five, and I'm gonna say those are, ah, uh, that's maybe, maybe eight feet high. So of course it's a mess out here. This is all gonna get paved, all this area here. It's gonna go from rock eventually to concrete and uh, it'll be beautiful. It's hard to get this tongue and groove as part of this uh, entrance to really appreciate it, but it's amazing. And as people come into the church, that they should be able to see through these windows. And uh, if they look in, they should be able to see all the way back to where the altar is. They'll be able to see it as soon as they come in. Well, here's an image looking at the south side of the building. And you can see we have these gabled windows. You can see the black paper on there. Again, remember it was yellow at one time. And as we move around here, you see a bell tower. And there is a bell there see the post on top of that there will be a cross there a nine foot cross and actually on the other side which is actually the front has a similar nine foot cross so this is actually the back of the church as it faces uh, 10th street we have a great school right across there so if I move around here you can see at least we're getting set up for where they're going to do stucco but maybe you can get a sense here there are several windows there's three windows there so there's there's one right here, a round window here, and another over here. So this is the birth of Christ and, and the how the Word was made flesh, also giving us a sense of the liturgy of the Word. This will be the death of Christ, and which gives us the Eucharist. And so those two, those two images, those two themes will play in that window. Up here, this is the window that's going to give us an interesting run for our money, I could say. These other small windows, or these windows, not small, these windows here, will be broken into three parts and we'll be able to go up that mezzanine I mentioned earlier. But this one is six foot round, the diameter is six foot, and there's no opening right now to get that up there. We're not going to put it in from the outside, we're going to put it up from the inside. How are we going to do that? Great question. We're actually going to have to cut a hole in the mezzanine. You can see that there is, from here, you can look, remember from the tour earlier, there was a second floor. Well, this is part of that mezzanine inside there. We have to cut a floor in that. Uh, the, they'll have to cut a hole in the floor somewhere in here and then lift up the six foot stained glass window into that position there. That would be awesome. And of course, what church would be complete without its bathroom, right? So we have a, an extra bathroom out here. <laughs> so I'm going to back up and get another view of this here. So this, it's situated right next to where our parking lot here is and then our offices that's our offices youth centers on the left and over here is our daily 24-hour uh, adoration chapel and then people when they come in they go up this very steep driveway unfortunately right here it's hard to tell from the video and then you can see the church shot of the church in one fell swoop. If you can see it, one of the things I think is pretty impressive is as I drive up here, it reminds me of an arc. Let's see if I can back up and get that image going on here. So you can see the other steeple on the other side. What a beautiful hill we have behind it, behind that church here. But it's, what's unusual is that we are, the church is not facing the street. And for reasons that hopefully will be clear, uh, it was a good idea. So when we e exit the church over here, if we were to do that, we'd be entering into a parking lot and then immediately the street. What we want to do is be able to go out this way 
into a courtyard which is over here and enjoy the beautiful scenery that we have. Uh, this is Beacon Hill up here. Because there's a beacon up there. You can see the, the towers up there. So anyhow, this is what it looks like. I'm going to back out again. You can see there's two towers. One here and there'll be across there and one up here will be across there. So there you have it. That's a tour of our new church as it's being built. It's getting real close to our date. We only have till September 1 and it's June, June 21st. And uh, things are rocking and rolling in here. I appreciate you, uh, your patience as I kind of roamed around there and had a jittery camera. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to, to post them. And I, we will try to get back to you and certainly answer any questions you might have. And until next time, may God bless you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.